gave me so much. How did I do with the debate the other night? Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, amazing. Keep that old broken down pile of crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a bad guy. He just quit, you know. He's quitting the rest. Is that right? Yep, I got him out of the rest. In a leaked video, Donald Trump wearing a 47 shirt tells all. Well, and that means we have Kamala. Nice. I think she's going to be better. She's so bad. She's so <laughs> pathetic. Gary calls former California Senator Attorney General and San Francisco District Attorney Kamala Harris pathetic. It's so amazing. It's just so bad. So I just can't imagine. But can you imagine that guy with dealing with Putin and the president of China, who's a fierce person? He's a fierce man. A very tough guy. And they see him. They probably they can't. But it, it, they just announced he's. He's probably quitting. Good. Very good. Yeah, that's amazing. Just keep knocking him out, right? <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, what was that? <laughs> Like, are we surprised that he said any of the stuff he did? No, of course not. Would you be surprised if he went further and used some other derogatory words to keep it light? No, of course not. There is a lot to get to, though. Let's dig in. There have been calls for President Joe Biden to step aside. Representative Lloyd Doggett joined the chorus saying, recognizing that unlike Donald Trump, President Biden's first commitment has always been to our country, not himself. I am hopeful that he will make the painful and difficult decision to withdraw. I respectfully call on him to do so. Ouch. Seth Moulton of the uh, of Massachusetts would say via The Guardian, President Biden has done enormous service to our country, but now is the time for him to follow in one of our founding fathers, George Washington's footsteps and step aside in order for new leaders to rise up. Moulton has since doubled down, citing the disaster of the debate. Angie Craig of Minnesota would be another Quote, given what I saw and heard from the president during last week's debate in Atlanta, coupled with the lack of a forceful response from the president himself following that debate, I do not believe the president can effectively campaign and win against Donald Trump. That's why I respectfully call on President Biden to step aside. One quick thing. There is so much material to work with if you oppose the former president. And yet... Dems are trotting out this guy. It is deeply frustrating because much like 16, it is winnable. You just have to meet the demands of the voters and those who simply throw their arms up and or give up. While Biden continues to say he is in the race, one key, and I need to be very clear about this, a huge key is donor money. As we know, this country, our laws, our rules, our regulations, housing, homelessness, inflation, trains, cars, climate, the EPA, banks, healthcare. I mean, you name it, the list goes on. It is all driven by the top 1%. It is all driven. Yet many have refused to cut checks to the Biden campaign. This is Massive. In this ABC News piece, the, I believe it was the executive producer of Lost, who's worth a bajillion dollars, the CEO of Netflix, who's worth a bajillion dollars, all of these major players who give to Dem causes are basically saying, we're holding off. We're refusing to cut the checks because we want somebody else. If this continues, the DNC will have no problem and no excuse for replacing the former president. From the Daily Beast, with worries about Biden's mental and physical acuity snowballing, the conversation has swung towards his second in command, that being Kamala Harris, the current VP, with a growing contingent of fans, the so-called K-Hive, both ironically and sincerely spreading her gospel online. The piece would continue. Post-debate polling reflects a similar groundswell of support for the former California senator, with the Reuters survey showing 81% of Dem respondents view Harris favorably, compared to 78% for Biden. The CNN poll showed the VP closing the gap, trailing him by two points, a result within the margin of error. As um, lead host and CEO of the network, Jank Uger said, you're going to have to make up more points because of the slavery-driven rule that is the Electoral College. What strikes me as odd is Trump's line of, imagine the Dem nominee sitting across from Vladimir Putin and the 
the president of the China, which is just so hilariously preposterous to me. And it is for many reasons. Here are some. New exclusive CNN reporting about highly classified intelligence that went missing at the end of the Trump administration. The intelligence was related to Russian election interference in the United States. It was so secret, it was kept inside a safe within another safe at CIA headquarters. But in the final weeks of the Trump administration, a copy of that intelligence was put inside a binder brought to the White House as part of an effort to declassify documents related to the FBI's Russia probe. And from there, the trail goes cold. What we're talking about here is the underlying intelligence that formed the basis of the US government's assessment that Russian President Vladimir Putin sought to help Trump win the 2016 election. Apparently now a part of the investigation being conducted into the whole campaign and all the Russia stuff, all that is $850 million that were given to one of his business associates that then was turned around and put into a Trump branded hotel in Toronto, $850 million coming from a Russian bank, of course, even though we've been assured many times that he doesn't have any loans or any debts from Russia, hasn't had any business with them. We find out about, oops, maybe a billion dollars. Russia, 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 that's all you heard at the beginnings <laughs> of this witch. That's all you heard at the beginning of this witch hunt hoax. And now Russia has disappeared because I had nothing to do with Russia helping me to get elected. It was a crime that didn't exist, so now the Dems and their partner, the fake news media, dot, 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 you fill in the blank. But that part people are talking about is he said, I had nothing to do with Russia helping me to get elected. Oops. When you mean that Russia helped me get elected? No, Russia did not help me get elected. You know who got me elected? You know who got me elected? I got me elected. Russia didn't help me at all. Russia, if anything, I think helped the other side. Additionally. Trump, when asked in an interview about Putin having his political opponents assassinated, the former president suggested some kind of comparison between that and what happens in the US, quote, there are a lot of killers here. You think our country's so innocent? Well, no, the difference is you're not trying to right or wrong. You're trying to continue carrying out. I, I don't wanna say the word, starts with an E, ends in an S. Starts with an E, X, ends with an S. That's what he's trying to do to members of the media. There was the threat on J6 about his own VP from his loyalists outside the Capitol. He has talked about, along with white nationalist Charlie Kirk, saying that they want to deport um, Latinos and migrants. They, they, they want a white... Christian fascist theocracy. And what would a, I think it's, let me say this, I think it's rather telling that you have all of these guys like Orban, MBS, Putin, all clearly, Netanyahu, clearly wanting Trump to be in office and they don't want a Dem nominee. That should say everything to a voter on who they are more comfortable with holding the oval over the other candidate. Meanwhile, don't let this get forgotten because when it comes to China. But Trump became president, all of a sudden there was this huge new unexplained influx of money into that company with this Chinese bank account. It comes in from who knows where, but it goes out as cash into the president's pocket. After that $17.5 million windfall from nowhere once he became president, President Trump took that out as cash. He took $15.1 million of it out for himself in 2017, once he was president. Another example, there was a report via the Washington Post citing former Trump national security advisor, John Bolton that the former POTUS asked him at the 2018 White House Christmas dinner, why we were considering sanctioning China over its treatment of the Uyghurs, a largely Muslim people who live primarily in China's northwest Xinjiang province. At the opening of the dinner at the G20 meeting in June 2019 with only interpreters present, 
She had explained to Trump why he was basically building concentration camps in Xinjiang. According to our interpreter, Trump said that she should go ahead with building the camps, which Trump thought was exactly the right thing to do. It obviously is not. The National Security Council's top Asia staffer, Matthew Pottinger, told me that Trump said something very similar during his November 2017 trip to China. I reiterate, there is so much to work with here on a man who does not care about anyone's rights and sees only the presidency as an opportunity to help himself, not even his kids, to help himself and only himself. A narcissistic person belongs nowhere near it. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYT Sports. And or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.